to my friendly local game shop for uh, uh, D&D game day, uh, uh, like last year, I think. And I sat down. It's funny, you can play with these guys that have never played 4th edition. And uh, uh, like kind of, like, um, remember when Wizards had four hit points? Yeah. <laughs> and like you got one spell and you were like, I cast light into his eyes, I guess. <laughs> And now I hide and hope that I don't die. <laughs> so, so I played with this guy uh, who, who obviously had not played since those days. And he was just like, he was terrified. And I kept saying to the guy, like, you really trust me, you can cast magic missiles. <laughs> and so, it would be great if you would cast magic missiles. <laughs> no, you don't have to stay in the doorway, but you can come into the room. <laughs> I'm familiar with the system, I'm the VR. And in the, in the talking of this, in the, in the doing, so I finally convinced the guy to like, participate in the game. And uh, uh, he rolls his dice, and uh, his d20 kind of like drops and rolls across the table, and it rolls right up against my hand. And the whole table goes, <gasps> as I like jump away. <laughs> Try not, you know, it's like I'm dodging a grenade or something. And it touches, and everybody can see, and everybody knows, like, I touched the guy's dice. And I was like, the dice touched me. I was just sitting there. Thank you for finally casting a spell. It's not the kind of positive reinforcement I was hoping to give you, but I'm glad you're here. So, um, this, uh, this story was written December 30th, 2008, and it's the Scrabble story, and it's called Triple Word Score. My wife Anne is one of those Scrabble players who regularly scores between 350 and 400 points in a two-player game. I know, right? I am one of those Scrabble players who was lucky to break 150 without opening the dictionary to find out if the collection of mysterious glyphs laid out before him would somehow be assembled into a legal word that is more complicated than one you would find in a Dick and Jane book. <laughs> one of the few games that Anne and I can play together and really have fun playing is Sorry, because there's like enough randomness in the game that I can't, I can't help it, okay? I'm not competitive when I play games, but I can't help give myself every possible advantage to play the game as efficiently as possible. So, like, so I count cards and everything, and it's automatic, I can't help it. And, and uh, you know, and, I, and I'm always, like, thinking five, six moves ahead, and, and she doesn't care. And uh, Sorry is one of those games where it just doesn't matter. And, and we figured out that we can sit down and like, like uh, have a beer and play sorry. And, uh, and, and it always comes down in a two-player game, it always ends up coming down to a race to see like who's gonna draw that one card that, that they need. So gamers, great to non-gamers, sorry, equalizer. <laughs> I do not provide even a nominal challenge for my wife. And where the average player would experience something akin to fun while playing a game, I experience only frustration. Yet she insists that we play together. Making words is fun, she says, oblivious to my failure to use all my letters even once in the decade we've been playing. I have never gotten a bingo in Scrabble, ever. Word. <laughs> but since she puts up with me describing everything in the world in gaming terms, for example, ah, uh, some idiot cast freezing cloud outside. I thought I'd have picked up some resist cold with all my trips to Seattle, but I just took one D8 ongoing 15 feet to the garage and back. And I 